back to Pray For All, NXT versus AEW. Those who have been tuning in, you already know what it's all about. No, we don't care about ratings. We just care about who did the best content between each show. And um, it was actually a good week. Very interesting show on both fronts. And cannot wait to get into it. Before we get into it, though, let's get this over with. Now that that's out the way, let's get started with the AEW rundown. Things first, I have to point this out. I've seen wrestling shows in clubs, seen wrestling shows outside in biker fests, and all my years I have never seen a wrestling show on a ship. I've been on a cruise ship. I know how live they are, and to see AEW actually pull that off was very impressive. They were on the Norwegian Pearl for uh, Chris Jericho's uh, what, Rock and Wrestler Rager. So it was Jericho's ship, so. Okay, props to Jericho for that, because uh, that was amazing. I was shocked. First match of the night is Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega versus Scorpio Sky and uh, Kaz SCU for the Tag Team Championships. Like I said, first time on a ship. Um, now one thing about the ship, the hits sound louder and harder than they would in the ring. I don't know if the microphone was closer or whatever, but I know that was different. And um, here's the thing, so they got into it and um, in the middle of the match, you know, uh, Scorpio Sky and Hangman Page, I guess he made Sky mad or something. They just automatically just got in a shoving match. Can you imagine being in a fight with somebody and you just bust out in a shoving match? That seems a little backwards to me, but hey. I mean, that's that's the way I see it. I mean, you're already fighting, so why, why are you going to start a shoving match? Just hit them. Now, there was one point in the match where uh, during the suplex, Paige landed right on his neck. It freaked me out, but um, he's okay. So, and um, then yo, King Omega. At some point, he was just on fire, and, and you know what I'm about to say, right? Snap Dragon Suplex. Nobody does it better. Fight on, and um, this guy that this is awesome chant. Anytime I hear this is awesome chant, I'm gonna make that aware. So this match definitely got that, and deservingly so, I might add. Now, at some point in the match, of course, uh, Adam Page inadvertently clotheslined Omega. So you thought that would be a, a turning point in the match. I mean, it gave SCU a little bit of an advantage, but um, they bounced right back. And I think the reason for that is because this whole match, it was just back and forth. So many close calls, you didn't know who was gonna win. But um, then Paige uh, just got second win. He just got on fire. And um, I know where he just hits a clothesline and the pin. He gets the pin. Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page are your new All Elite Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Congratulations. You deserve it. Even though I kind of feel like I know where this is going eventually. And uh, furthermore, the Elite came to, you know, uh, Young Bucks. And then they came to the ring to congratulate them, of course. Um, Omega was still in the ring. Hangman Adam Page left the ring to go to the crowd to get a drink. Then the crowd carried him all the way up the ramp and he just left. <sighs> so even after winning the title, the tension is just there. Anyway, awesome match. Congrats to those guys. Okay, it may be cold outside, but it's very hot in this lab. I had to change my shirt. I don't know why I was thinking of even uh, wearing that flannel shirt in the first place. Anyways, next match was Rick Baker versus Priscilla Kelly. Uh, Priscilla Kelly, I don't know what she was doing, moving around, screaming, all over, just everywhere, just doing the most. I'm all like, dude, girl, what, what is wrong with you? 
Man, sit your ass down. As Britt Baker came out, JR was like, yes, she is a, a Dennis. For real. JR, when you say for real like that, what that does is uh, undermine, you know, everything that's going on. You pretty much weaken kayfabe and um, you just don't do that. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> oh, I got a lot of Baker fans out there, but she's still very, very slow in the ring to me. Like, she has not improved on that at all. I mean, I'm not doubting her skills at all, but she does not move efficiently to me at all. One thing I did notice, she's starting to fight a little bit dirty. Yeah, I, I did notice that. And uh, one thing that really took me back, Priscilla Kelly hit an STO. When I used to play the WWE games and all that, that used to be my favorite move to do. I would uh, go off the rope and hit somebody with a running STO, like, boom! I'm oh, like, man, if I could just have that as a finisher, I would have been happy about that, man, for real. So eventually, uh, Britt Baker wins with the lockjaw, of course Kelly taps out. So right after that, she has an interview in the ring with uh, Tony Schiavone, and she she just started just going off on them, talking about, it's a good thing you landed a job here, and instead of being a crappy barista at Starbucks, I say crappy can't say what she actually says, because I'm pretty sure my mama watching. So, uh, and then she talking about uh, she the hottest girl on the ship and all that stuff, but she pissed JR off so bad that they just went to commercial break. So I guess it's safe to say that her circle of a heel turn has completed. You saw it coming. You had the Jurassic Express versus the Inner Circle. Of course, the crowd was singing to Chris Jericho's theme song. I mean, it's his ship, so of course they're gonna rock to him. Now, I will say, I was loving the moves in this match. I mean, when I said I love the moves, I mean, from mainly from Jurassic Express. I'm talking about Marco Polo, uh, Dino Libre, and Dylan McKay Jr. himself. <laughs> yeah, I said that. Anyway, so eventually, uh, Hager fights Luchasaurus off. Uh, Jungle Boy was somewhere around ringside and he got knocked off or something. So it was uh, Marco Stunt and Jericho. Marco Stunt was holding his own, but out of nowhere, Jericho hits the Judas effect and gets the pin. Of course, he's going to get the pin on his ship. Do the same. So next, you had MJF versus Joey Janela. And it looks like Joey Janela was singing some old school Mario the night before. Yo, this, this crowd was live. I mean, they were saying some chants that I'm not even going to repeat on this show because uh, at least for the time being, the show is PG. So, uh, yeah, these chants were not. So, <laughs> And at one point in the match, uh, MJF, you know, acted like he was going to walk off. So he started walking to the back. But uh, he basically did it to bait Joey Janela. And MJF attacked him right up the ramp. Now, at some point in the match, they were going back and forth like, I know MJF grabbed the ref in his way, then uh, Joey Janela snatched away. I'm like, I better stop messing with Aubrey and let her do her job. Seriously. Don't do it like that. And um, Kip, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford, they came up the ramp and uh, the distraction was long enough for MJF to hit the double cross and he picked up the win. MJF cuts a promo afterwards and um, he actually responded to that burn that uh, Cody gave him last week about uh, this ain't your story, you're just a chapter of mine. So MJF was all like, yeah, I am a chapter. I'm your last chapter. So uh, Cody comes out. Now keep in mind, uh, due to all the stipulations, one of them includes the fact that Cody cannot touch MJF until the match. 
So uh, MJF knew this and MJF uh, pretty much just dogged him and he pretended like he was giving him the mic. He drops the mic, kicks the mic, uh, flips Cody off, then walks off. And um, right after that, the Young Bucks came and attacked him and they threw him in the pool. And the crowd was saying, he can't swim, he can't swim. So uh, I thought that was very, very fun. The next match you had John Moxley versus Pac. Now, um, John Moxley still had his eye wrap from when Jericho attacked him last week with that spike. Very, very dirty. Now, uh, before we get into details of this match, one thing that happened during this match, I think it was another Norwegian ship, but uh, another ship was uh, passing the ship that the show was on. And this crowd is so wild that these folks was out here chanting, our ship's better and your ship sucks. That was a cruise for the ages, I'm sure. But uh, of course, um, Pac was targeting the eye. I mean, I would do the same thing. Uh, uh, any damage you see on any opponent is definitely gonna be a, a target, so. Sorry, folks. So, uh, during the match, Pack had a very nice looking uh, German suplex. Um, and um, John Moxley hit Pack with the DDT. It, it looked more like how Dirty Deeds look in the WWE. So, I thought it was the finisher. But uh, Pack kicked out. So, apparently, um, I realized. Paradigm Shift is a little more exaggerated than Dirty Deeds. Anyway, so um, Pac had uh, John Moxley in a submission and it looked like Moxley was going to tap out. This crowd went wild. I mean, booing like crazy. So uh, John Moxley reached the ropes and the crowd actually started chanting, Thank you, Jesus. When I say this crowd was wild, I mean this crowd was wild. And um, eventually Pac works off uh, Mox's uh, eye wrap and just starts attacking him. So, and uh, John Mox eventually gets the upper hand and then he eventually hits the paradigm shift and wins the match. Of course, uh, Jericho was up there in commentary. Eventually he came down, or he didn't even come down, he just stayed up in the ramp, held the belt up. Uh, might not have it. Come on, Jericho. Enjoy it on your ship. For the superlatives, uh, for that segment, I actually put the whole MJF thrown into the pool thing as the best segment because it helped the greatest to me. Best promo went to MJF because he played off of uh, Cody's burn. I think Cody had it last week, so. Yeah, and um, in all fairness, there really weren't that many promos. I mean, there was a couple of interviews and whatnot, and there was one interview I forgot to mention. It's when they interviewed um, Omega and Paige, and Paige got frustrated because every time he was talking, he got interrupted, whether it was Shivani cutting him off, asking Omega another question, or whether it was just the Young Bucks just coming in and uh, he just stormed off. During this whole time, he was holding a drink in his hand. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how I feel about this whole alcoholic um, whatever he's uh, portraying. I mean, I, I, I know they gotta be realistic with it, but I don't know. I, I don't care for it. Because, I mean, I know it's eventually going to lead to a rip, but, you, you know, a lot of people are, they, they have a lot of ghosts with alcohol, and I just think, for some people who watch this, and I know some people are like, well, if it bothers you, don't watch it, but you just got to think about the audience that you're entertaining. That's all. Like I said, not, not just drinking, I'm just talking about drunkenness and um, 
wild behavior and whatnot. Anyways, uh, that storyline, or continuous storyline, I put that as uh, Cody and MJF. Now, I could have put that as John Moxley and, and Chris Jericho, but um, being that Cody and MJF finally co uh, confronted each other face to face, I gave it to them tonight. And um, crowd favorite uh, tag team of Omega and Page. They had collectively, I think they had 15. And since they were a team, that means they combined. So, and match of the night was um, Omega and Page versus SCU. Because that match was awesome. Now, as are AEW superlatives. And for NXT tonight, first match. Of course, it's a uh, uh, match within the Dusty Rose Classic Tournament. It is Undisputed Era, Fish and O'Reilly versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. So, um, as the Undisputed Era was coming to the ring, uh, Adam Cole went to announce who like, I know Imperium's here. Uh, like, I dared him to show up, you know, all that stuff, trying to sound all tough. Uh, yeah, don't act tough now. You know you're scared. Anyway. So, uh, there was one spot in the match. So, O'Reilly had Gibson up in a, you know, vertical suplex position in the air. And uh, so, Fish... I guess he was supposed to have kicked Gibson in the head. He actually kicked O'Reilly in the shoulder. And Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Ain't That A Botch. Now for AEW, what? What? Are you serious? Okay. Our incident comes from NXT tonight. Well, that is a first. Well, you know what? Let's not waste time, Henry. Roll that footage. Riley now the legal man. Riley now the legal man. Wow. Way to kick your partner in the back, huh? That gives a definition to backstabber. Definitely. Now, I know his foot had to land somewhere. Some people will say I'm nitpicking or I'm doing too much to actually call that a botch, but. Here's what I have to say about that. It doesn't matter what you think! I couldn't say it any better myself, Rock. With that being said, back to the fray. So after this, um, Imperium's music hits. Of course, the crowd sings Imperium's song. And they're just standing up there. They didn't even come and attack for real. And, but yet yeah, the distraction was long enough for the grizzled young veterans to hit their finisher and get the win. So they advance in the Dusty Rose Classic. Next match is Tony Storm versus Io Shirai. And I got to say, I love Io Shirai's moves. Like, uh, it's like something out of a video game sometimes. Uh, whether she's doing the Shariokin or, uh, just all around flips around the ring and you know Tony Storm she ain't no slouch neither of course uh, the match didn't even finish the Bianca Belair attacked both of them she first attacked Tony Storm then I think she you know briefly attacked Io Shirai uh, then uh, Rhea Ripley came out started fighting Bianca Belair then uh, Io Shirai joined in and uh, Tony Storm joined in and that's pretty much the gist of the whole thing match you had uh, Finn Balor versus a Xenomorph. Now this one get what? Really? Okay I'm sorry. You have Finn Balor versus Joaquin Wilde. One Xenomorph? Okay well he needs to stop wearing that thing on his head then. Anyway so Finn Balor versus Joaquin Wilde. Uh, Finn Balor wasted no time. Let's see he got in there he hit this Deadly drop kick. Uh, hit. I think he hit the a crew brawl first. Then he hit him with 1916, and uh, the match is over. I mean, what was left of the match? 
Well, that didn't take too long. The next match we had was Shotzi Blackheart versus Shayna Baszler. Now, at the beginning of this match, you know, uh, Baszler did this, you know, quick wrestling move, and she kind of tapped Shotzi on the head as a taunt. I was like, yeah, that's big gangster right there. Now, if you told me this match was going to happen, regardless if Shotzi Blackheart eliminated um, Shayna Baszler in the Battle Royal last week, if you told me this match was going to happen, I would have said it would have just been uh, a blowout, uh, Baszler hands down. But no, Shotzi Blackheart showed heart. She, she really took Baszler to her limit in this match, for real. Now, uh, Baszler... Uh, won via submission, uh, but um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that was a bit of a wasted opportunity. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, of course, uh, we know Shayna Baszler is that chick, but imagine if Shotzi Blackheart would have gotten, I can't believe I'm saying this, a roll up pin or something like that over Shayna Baszler, you know, something out of nowhere. I thought this would have did a great feud for them that they can drag out, because here's the thing. Shayna Baszler, she's been champ for a very long time. We haven't seen her as a normal competitor for a while, so I thought this would be a, a great opportunity to put her in a feud outside the championship for a while, let that get some more airflow or whatever. And at the same time, Shotzi Blackheart, Shotzi Blackheart level could rise up. I mean, I thought both women could have benefited from a longer feud. Now, they could still do it because of how good Shotzi Blackheart looked in the match. But I thought, you know, just a fluke win would kind of spark uh, a type of beneficial feud between the two. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not a NXT uh, writer, but, you know. I just thought that would have been a good opportunity for that, but that's just my opinion. Anyhow, uh, Bagels are one. That's how it was. Now, there was a Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai interview. So, um, being that they had an interview, I, to me, that keeps the feud going. Because uh, I think that's a feud that's definitely going to explode. And that was a Garza interview, you know, about him defending the belt, whatever. Anyway, on to the next one. So, we had Imperium versus Riddle and Dunn, or Roserweight. Now, um, this was a hard-hitting affair. But before we get to a hard-hitting affair, just like Joey Janela at AEW, I think Matt Riddle was listening to some old-school Mario the night before. And Pete Dunne had some wonderful moves in this match, man. I mean, from a clothesline to a crucifix bomb and uh, all that. It's like for a period of time, yeah, I keep dropping this. For a period of time, Pete Dunne was um, pretty much owning the match when he was in there. But then the one thing that I was waiting on, a confrontation between Pete Dunne and Walter. The guy who dethroned him after 685 days. There they were. Of course, I was long enough for um, Imperium to uh, get the upper hand from that distraction. So they had the upper hand for a while, but eventually Riddle and Dunn came back and uh, they won the match. And this was a great match. A very hard hitting fair. Uh, I expect nothing less from these guys. Um, right after um, Rosa Wake won the match, you know, they went up to the. Uh, trophy and they were confronted by the winners of earlier tonight the grizzled young veterans so of course they get on mic uh first of all they called pete dunn selfish saying that uh he helped them back in nst uk or something like that and uh riddle was all like uh were you saying something because uh i understand where you say it anyway and uh pete dunn was all like okay while well, your head was in the clouds uh Let's just let them know we're still going to beat these two next week. And that's pretty much uh, how that ended. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to today's main event, I just want to pay tribute to one of the best sports announcers in the world today, Mr. Mauro Nalo, and all his quotes. We had tonight, we had chemistry like Will Smith and Martin Lawrence and Bad Boys for Life. 
The next one we had click like Dorothy slippers. The next one we had Ms. and Mrs. would agree to the This Is Awesome chant. Then we had had the strength of John Henry, the speed of Bruce Lee, the love to be like water, and rain on undisputed era's prophecy. Smooth like the days of underoos. If you don't know, now you know. Mauro Ronaldo, you are awesome, my friend. For our main event of the evening, we have Keith Lee taking on Roderick Strong for the NXT North American Championship. Well deserved by Lee to get this opportunity again. So, um, Roderick Strong, being the mat technician that he is, went straight for uh, Keith Lee's injured ankle. Uh, Lee tried to fight him off. Eventually, he hit like this one-handed body slam, like boom. And it, I mean, it was so massive that the crowd was just chanting one more time. And uh, so Strong kept going back to the ankle, and eventually, uh, Fish attacked the ankle too. Yes, uh, Undisputed Era uh, made their presence known around the ring. But you know, with all that, Lee still came back. He even went as far as to uh, pounce Roddy Strong out the ring, similar to what happened with Adam Cole last year, which was probably one of the best gifts ever. Gift, gif, whatever you call it, I don't care. Anyway, so um, at one point in time, all of Undisputed Era was distracted or knocked down or whatever. So he hit, uh, Keith Lee hit Robert Strong with some finish. I think it's called a big catastrophe. I'm not sure. Whatever it was, the ending result was Keith Lee is your new reigning, defending, undisputed NXT North American champion. And we shall all bask in his glory. Yes, I'm happy. Because I love Keith Lee. And he deserved that. That dude is a beast. However, that wasn't necessarily the end of the night. Congrats, Keith Lee. Imperium came out to confront a disputed era. And a fight ensues. So, of course, the officials came to break up the fight. And the crowd was chained to let the fight. But before that... A uh, dude hit Adam Cole with the, the biggest knife as chop. I thought his chest was five feet back. I was like, wow. But that's actually how NXT ended. So for best segment, I have Undisputed Era and Imperium Brawl. Best promo, um, I had it between the Grizzly Young Veterans, the Veterans and Broser Wake, that whole conference confrontation. Best storyline being that they had a vignette and I think it was one of the strongest storylines going on. Uh, Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox. Crowd favorite tonight was Keith Lee with 10 chance, of course. Match of the night was Imperium versus Broserway. And that is your NXT superlative. So, with that being said, we will see, you know, the overall results and let's see who won Pray For All. So, I know that this is my third episode on YouTube, but this is my 13th episode overall. And as I mentioned before, NXT has seven, and now AEW has six. So, 
they're almost tied because AEW won tonight. Congrats, AEW, for winning Pray for All tonight. Now, um, there is a couple things I want to talk about. Like I said, I've been doing the Facebook thing for a while. My Facebook group, I have maybe 13 members. Uh, on YouTube, at least at the making of this video, I think I have maybe five subscribers. And I, I just want to say this. I don't clamor for attention. In fact, I think I tried to advertise uh, my show on Reddit and I forgot to read the subreddits and apparently that was against the rules and they banned me. <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm not doing the, um, what I call that. Wow, I, I, I forgot the, the, the segment where I'm angry. I only did one thus far. Um, but um, I do this because I love wrestling. And I love making videos almost as much as I love 3D printing. Yes, they're working tonight. So I can have five subscribers. I can have 500,000 subscribers. I'm gonna keep doing what I love to do. If you like my product, yes, I invite you to watch it. If you don't, maybe it's not for you. A lot of people, they want to clamor for views and subscribers or whatever. I'm going to keep doing my show because that's what I love to do. And uh, if people hear about me, great. You know, but I just want to let y'all know, I'm not trying to just clamor for attention. I, I feel like I put on a good product. If you like it, cool. If not, at least you're seeing me doing what I love to do. And honestly, that's all that matters, and um, I'm also saying that because that's what you need to do in life. You know, you don't need everybody to see what you're doing. Just do what you like to do. That's all that is. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to the fray tonight. I'll catch y'all later. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?